Good morning, folks. As the news was processing the first time today, the western USA started shaking. Had to stop, include that, and we're about an hour and a half behind today, but we'll still get to it all starting at spaceweathernews.com. And while the last day on our star was relatively calm on the Earth-facing half, with a few coronal holes turning through, the big story in space weather today is what's hiding behind the northeastern limb. That's got active region written all over it, and at that high a latitude, it's a member of Sunspot Cycle 25. We will get visibility of it tomorrow. Meanwhile, the solar wind is relatively calm. That little orange bump near the right caused the only deviation from a slowly weakening plasma stream. Still nothing major, and all is quiet geomagnetically. The seismicity and shaking I mentioned, that happened in Nevada. Initial reading is magnitude 6.7 very shallow. Hopefully everything is all right there. The aftershocks have been ongoing since the initial rumble. Speaking of beneath our feet, we're going out along the island chain of Hawaii, where sitting almost all the way below the water is the world's biggest and hottest shield volcano. That was thought to be Mauna Loa, but it's actually hiding under the water to the west. It's going to rewrite hotspot pulses in the textbooks in terms of how long they're able to stay alive, much longer than they thought. Another cool story up next, the ancient people and their tools. It turns out that the shift between crude tools and more complex works that require discipline, concentration, and significantly higher brain function and self-control actually began more than half a million years ago. This can help rewrite what they thought humans were capable of back then, and perhaps the level of advancement of those ancient societies. Up next, we're going out to space to TRAPPIST-1, the dwarf star system with seven planets somewhat closely characterized like the Jupiter and Moon system, except TRAPPIST doesn't orbit a larger sun. They are discovering that the previously believed to be misaligned orbits of the planets are not. They are in fact aligned with the spin of the star. This was a goofy and hard to reconcile concept that came out about a year ago, and frankly, I'm very glad to see it go because there's much cooler and wetter things to think about given the buffet of awesome potential planets this system serves up. Now up next, let's go to one of the problems that is hiding things in plain sight. When they look at galaxies in deep space, it is extremely easy to confuse weakly interacting galactic nuclei with the dynamics of the diffuse ionized gas, aka plasma, within the interstellar medium. They are trying to resolve the issue, and that's a good thing because that hiding plasma is causing a lot of mathematical trouble at the galactic scale. Scaling up one more time to the universe, folks, papers like these are probing a reality that they are pointed towards but which our technology can't quite touch. The theory, however, on the primordial and still existing cosmic magnetic fields is a tremendous one, and a major source of future discovery for cosmology regardless of what paradigm into which the scientists are fitting it. Last but not least, I once told Dr. Tinsley at our conference, I don't think there's anywhere in the world he could publish and it would evade me for an entire month. Yesterday, on the 14th, one month after its release, I finally did catch his Earth and Space Science open release with his usual team. In a follow-up to yesterday's Electric Sky story, today is the particle forcing and magnetic fields of the solar system, not just affecting the clouds, but once again a finding of their affecting the surface pressure. Once again, space weather nearly instantaneously has an effect on the entire vertical atmospheric column. And the critical aspect here is that the high latitude pressure cells have reacted in an obvious way, but the mid and low latitude cells still needed study. Here's that study. And of course, all this energy is flowing into the global electric circuit after having coupled with the Earth's system electromagnetically. This is solar climate forcing. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got a climate forcing playlist you should check out linked below this video. Come back later this afternoon for a very special top 10 video. You won't want to miss that one. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.